I'm a second year postdoc here. However, I'm still happy to introduce myself because most of the audience are new. <laughs> uh, the, because this is a general audience talk, so I'd like to start from a model problem. Uh, my research of interest, the model of problem is this problem. We start from R cross S1, and let theta be a coordinate, let R be another coordinate. And we want to study the equation Laplacian U equal to F. The key idea, which goes back to Fourier, is the separation of variable. He writes U as sum of U and R, E, I, and theta, and write F as sum of F and R, E, I, and theta. Then this complicated partial differential equation becomes an ordinary differential equation, which is ddt, ddr minus n, ddr plus n, un equal to fn. In particular, for example, when f equal to 0, you can directly solve it. And in general, you can also integrate twice to get a solution. So we, we can get the solution. However, the next goal is to change this Laplacian to some more complicated thing. And in this process, you really need an estimate on it. And the estimate relies on a theorem due to Hardy. He claimed that if f belongs to 0f, uh, uh, convex supported smooth function on R, then integral from 0f infinity f square e nu r dr. Then the key idea of Hardy is to do the integration by parts. You get 1 over nu integral to be negative to f f prime e nu r dr and then using the cauchy schwarz inequality you can show that this is smaller than 4 over nu square integral 0 f prime square e nu r dr and then we apply this inequality back to here then we get the required estimate So we see that if we integrate this thing, then we can rewrite it in our favorite way. Then we can apply Hardy's inequality. And this is the same as uh, the, the expression here. And then we can do the similar thing again, and we get the f final conclusion. That is, even though we cannot directly get estimate of u from f, but if we times a weight, then if u times a non-critical weight, then you get weighted analysis. This weighted analysis begins from this simplest version. However, it now has many applications in different uh, cases. There are many ways to generalize it. 
so this is on the cylinder, then the first way to generalize is a manifold which is asymptotic to the cylinder. So the metric G converge to the cylinder. Uh, in general, this may not be a metric on S1, it can be another metric. Then this is called, and R goes to infinity, this is called asymptotically cylindrical. And we can apply this estimate to asymptotically cylindrical manifold. The other typical math uh, thing which you can apply this method are the you can either let R go to infinity, which is called asymptotically conical. Or you can let R go to zero, and that's conical singular. There is a more complicated thing, which is you can let G converge to dr square plus r square h1 plus h2. That's called fibered boundary because uh, fibered fiber boundary because usually we can not not only take the product metric, but we can replace this h2 by a vibration. And here we let r go to infinity. If the same thing, but you let r go to zero, then you get a conical singularity along a submanifold. Now I'd like to briefly say what I did before. So my first main theorem is show so that's my theorem together with Xiu Xiong Chen in 2015 and 2016. We study non-compact version of type of K3 surface. We provide a classification of it, and all of them belong to the asymptotically cylindrical manifolds or the fibered boundary manifolds or asymptotically conical manifolds. We, first of all, we use some method to show that it must have this crack boundary behavior. Then we use this analysis to give a complete classification of non-compact version of K3 surface. And then I have another work in 2017 about an example of G2 manifold with this conical singularity. But it's a local model. And in the last year, I did something which want to construct a global G2 manifold with this conical singularity. And the method I used is something related to conical singularity along sub-manifold and the conical singularity. So this is what I did before. And next year, I'm still here. And my goal is to apply this kind of analysis to other geometrical problems. For example, maybe minimal surface, maybe other things. So thanks. <laughs>